What's up everyone, Bren here, and this is going to be my first pubcast where I'm going to be commentating on things such as item builds, skill builds, general decision making, and focusing on both what I see that is correct and what I feel is completely wrong. I'll be honest with you guys, if I see something that I believe to be wrong, I'm not going to downplay it in any way, so I might end up being completely fucking harsh on some players, and that's just how it is. So right off the bat, I'm going to be going over the heroes in the game and the players on them. We have Inne and Visage. Michael on Wind Ranger, who's my friend, Chairman on Bristleback, Melon on Draw Ranger, Barry on Disruptor, playing against Alchemist on Genes Genesis on Alchemist, Vizier on Shadow Fiend, Dora on Bane, Killerist on Bounty, and Keen Eyes on Rubik. So let's take a look up here. Bristleback is going to be going for his ward. Let's see how he plays this. Alchemist is going to be in Vision, so they both see each other. Uh, Rubik just planted the sword, so they have full vision on him. Uh, they've seen him plant that. Why did he plant? Okay. He Bristleback knew that the enemy team had. Okay, Bristleback knew that the enemy team had wards on him, had vision on him. I mean, so why did he just go ahead and just plant a ward? Like it's no big deal. I I don't understand this. And not only did he plant like a ward that was that the enemy team seen, so they're going to be able to deward it easily, but he also planted a ward in this spot, which it blocks the pull, but it's really easy to deward in the. Anyways, I don't know, there's a lot of problems with what just happened, but let's see, Bane has sentries though, so he'll be able to go and deward this, no no problem, they've seen exactly where they, where he placed it. Now, Alchemist went for the Grievous Greed level 1 build, so he's going to be getting 400 gold on the bounty rune, so for anyone that doesn't know, Grievous Greed increases the amount of gold you get from bounty rune by, by 4 times, so he gets 400 from the first rune. Alright, so, wait, 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 what's going on? Why are they pinging over here? They saw him plant it right here. Uh, what? What? All right. Is their memory bad? Didn't they? They all had origin on them with this range, what they planted. Oh my God. Are, are they going to be getting it? Bane has one more century. Hopefully, he gets it this time. Yes, he got it. Okay. So. Anyways, I don't know what the hell just happened, but top. So let's take a look at bot. We have the century. Uh, Disruptor's going to be going and pulling. Hopefully he's, he pulls this and then pulls through the medium camp. Because based on Bounty Hunter's item build, he has boots of speed, not too much regen. And yeah, so he has he doesn't have much regen to really contest a pull. Because Disruptor has a sentry and he has regen of his own. So if he goes for a Thunderstrike build, he'll be able to get really good farm and both clear uh, or keep Bounty Hunter away. But... So Drown needs to be pushing if he's going for this pull. What's happening? Uh, he's just kind of staticking the lane. Okay, if if you know that your teammate's going for a pull, go ahead and just push the lane because you don't want to have creeps underneath their tower because not only will they have to blow region to last hit, it makes last hitting a little bit more based on RNG. You can last it pretty well in their tower if you know how to do it correctly, but there's a lot of other problems. It's going to make the offliner easier to leech from the pulls if he goes and, do, if, if he goes and does that. Um, and yeah, you're going to have to be lasting under tower, so go ahead and push the lane out if you know that your support is, is uh, going to be pulling. And I don't know why he pulled a double here and went for the complete deny. He honestly, with the, they they seen the bounty hunter's item build. He has no regen. He has a sentry. He has another sentry, which he can plant over here and basically just cut and keep him off the, keep him off the pull. So I don't know. Yeah, just some misplays going on here. Disrupt, Disruptor could be getting huge, but... They're actually giving this bounty hunter more than he should be, and Disruptor is not going to be as farmed as he could be, and Draw is going to also be less farmed because he has because he's going to be forced to less hunter tower, and they get this double wave. Ah, <sighs> just problems. Oh man, we just got a first blood top. I missed it. Um, yeah. So they went on the bristleback and the visage. They all actually had to blow a lot of regen. Now. Alchemist gets a ring of health. Uh, I don't know why. He, okay, so if he had a if he had gold for a ring of health, he, ring of health, he had he had gold for a wand. I don't know. He up, going up against, against the bristleback and safing. Your first item should always be a wand. I don't care what hero you're playing. A wand is just so great. You can spam back. You can use your abilities back at the enemy team, and you're gonna get to get that regen. And hopefully this, uh, he goes for a more aggressive build with acid spray at his next level, because they need to be get zoning these guys off the lane. He's not getting any farm, so this greed will not help him in any way. 
Now, let's take a look at mid. Let me turn stats on here. Last hits into nice. So 16 and 16 last hits, 4 to nice for Wind Ranger. 11 last hits, 3 to nice for Shadow Fiend. Pretty much what you expect. Michael is dominating early, and now Shadow Fiend has his raises, so he's built to get CS. Pretty much a boring lane to watch. Uh, once Shadow Fiend gets his levels, he'll just start getting basically farm that you can't deny. Hopefully, Michael does some uh, pulls here so we can get ahead at some point. Okay, we have an engagement on top. Bristleback is. Okay, why is Lelkum just standing behind him? A Bristleback. They're going to be getting him anyways, but. Still. But, really good return kill for Midnight. What the Alchemist should have done, actually, is he should have... Okay, I don't know why he was standing right here, because you always have to be wary of um, Bristleback's passive. So what he should have done is actually walked in front of him, used his ability. He would have been closer to the Visage, so... He, I, let me discuss this. So not only is it bad to throw it onto his back when he was slept like that, but if he was in front of the Bristleback when he threw it, he would have taken more damage. The Bristleback would have died sooner because you wouldn't have that 16% reduction from throwing on his back. So with that death sooner and Alchemist being over here in this position, they would have gotten the they would have pushed Visage away from killing their their Rubik friend. Or who did he kill? Yeah, he killed the Rubik, right? Yeah, he killed the Rubik. But um so yeah. Now let's take a look at Bot. Bounty Hunter is four Bounty Hunter is four in this lane against the disruptor and a drow. Like, okay, they gotta kill him, that's good, but he, sh he shouldn't be level 4. Like, he just shouldn't be level 4. Like, the Disruptor, there's just too many mistakes that went on. Drow didn't push the lane when he knew that Disruptor was pulling. Disruptor stacked this camp and didn't, like, f didn't farm it correctly. But he should have just left it at a single single stack and then pulled through to get really f good farm. He could have been really ahead, even as a support. Michael, 30 CS at 5 minutes, really strong as a mid, doing a really good job uh, in this lane. Not much really, not too much to say. Um, let's see here though. Is there any stacks in the jungle? No stacks at all. Mostly, mostly because of the, okay. <sighs> because of this trial lane, I don't know why he doesn't have boots yet. I don't know why this alchemist doesn't have a wand. He should have a wand initially, as I was saying, and he's going up against a, a semi-strong dual lane, but he has heroes that can deal with it. If he had Acid Spray, Boots, and a Wand, he would actually be able to push these enemies out of his lane, out of the lane, and he would be getting more gold than going for this 2 in Grievous Greed build that he went for. Now, we just had a solo kill from the Bounty Hunter on the Drow. Now, uh, I don't know how the hell that happened, but I'm going to assume... Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. What happened is, that, is the Bounty Hunter is too big. He's just... He has a lot more than he should have. Like Bounty Hunter is an awful, an awful offliner. And you don't see him in competitive games for a reason. All right, so, so they all have to play back now, mostly because of Alchemist mistakes. And not only is this mistake hurting their actual try lane, but it's hurting SF because their supports aren't able to stack. So. Really awful play by Alchemist. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it at all. Completely terrible. Is he gonna throw it in his back again? What is going on? Why didn't he get in front of him? Either way. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Either way. So Alchemist build pretty bad. He's playing. He's using his stun throw when when the burst back is slapped completely wrong as well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. The, the problem's bottom as well. Draw died. Bunny is too big. Disruptor is playing completely wrong. Let's take a look at the vision for both teams. So, Radiant has no vision. Let's see, can I view their wards? Can I view their wards? I think, I think this works, just clicking on it. They have two wards in stock. Um, and their sports have gold to get it. They should have picked it up right away. Um, you don't have to buy like the first ward right when it comes off cooldown, but you should be getting at least both of them right when you do have two in stock. Now, Bonnie Hunter is sitting mid. Michael's farming well. He There's been no stacks in here. Um, I guess you can make the conscious decision to either play a little bit more aggressively and deny your your enemy's farm, or just rely on... Like, like, there's, okay, I'll, go, I'll come back to that. Let's take a look at top. 
All right, so there's not, there's not actually an engagement breaking out, but Visage just hits six, so this would be big. So when you're playing mid like this and you're on Radiant, you can either make the conscious decision to let your enemy t enemy mid have a little bit more farm, but you're going to be getting a lot more farm if you go ahead and stack this camp and then you take it out at a later date with your AoE. Um, and Michael just went for the decision to stay in lane, pretty much get really good farm regardless, and keep the SF down a little bit. Now, I, I can't really blame him either way. Um, I like going for like the more greedy build myself, letting the enemy team have enemy mid have a little bit more farm by stacking this. So we have an engagement going on top. Okay, <sighs> there's really not too much to say about these engagements, honestly. Alchemist doesn't have acid spray. He doesn't even have boots yet or a wand. Like, come on, man! Like, what the hell is this? I don't know what this is, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, like, if you're going for this alchemist carry, the whole idea behind it is just making sh sure that you're able to get a header in the early game because he sure as hell does not scale well with items and at this point he, and he doesn't scale well with items and he doesn't really have a way to catch up too well so I'm just rage sitting in base for a little bit waiting for his TP <sighs> we have a glimpse back okay what range is this alright well I guess that's a good glimpse are they gonna be able to get the kill? No, probably not. Oh, they are. I mean, they are. My bad. I'm like thinking of some. I'm thinking of other things that have been going on in this game. So, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so okay, we have a bounty hunter with a ring of health. Is this gonna be a battle fury? I think this is the average average MMR in this game is like 4.5k. By the way, guys, it might be a little bit higher than that. But we have some questionable ass shit going on. Like some really suspect stuff going on here, guys. <sighs> Decent CS by Drow, but honestly, it, this could be a lot higher. 40 A as, as a safe laner against a really weak offlaner should probably be at least 60 at this point. The, the mid, his middle has more CS, which uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> but so yeah, Alchemist is going for this greedy ass, this greedy ass uh, battle fury build. And honestly, with the battle fury build, yeah, you can farm fast. But when does Alchemist actually come online? You get the battle fury so you can farm fast, but you do not actually come online as a carry until you have like four or five items on this hero, really. So you need to be getting ahead. He should have gotten the boots, as I said, the wand, gotten the Grievous Greed, so they can push the Trilane out of the lane. He would have more farm because of it, even though he would have less points in Grievous Greed, and his Shadow Fiend would be much bigger because the supports could go and do things such as stacking and pulling once they establish lane dominance, maybe TPing to the offlane and killing Drow, killing Disruptor. It all really comes back to this Alchemist item build, seriously. And the play that he made in the beginning. Um, I was about to commentate the team fight, but at this point, rating is just so far ahead. I don't even know how the hell they're going to be coming back, but I'm going to keep casting this game. I like pointing this stuff, kind of stuff out. I'll be pointing out, I'm going to be continuing to point out everything that I see wrong, even on, for the team that's winning. And I was about to say, Alchemist's skill build, his decision making in terms of like, throwing his concoction at a bristleback in his, uh, from the behind is really awful. He saw the ward at the beginning and he like gave his support the wrong location to do the sentry. Some really suspect shit going on. I don't want to call him a plant, but I don't know what's going on with you, man. Uh, Genesis. Oh yeah, I'll be. I'll go later on Genesis, right? But this bounty hunter, killerist. I don't. Please tell me this is not a battle fury. Don't don't go battle fury on this hero, guys. Like a bounty hunter is another hero that's kind of useless in terms of like being equal on farm in general on the enemy team. On average, he is a hero that doesn't really scale too well. His stat gains are kind of mediocre. He relies. His ultimate is basically just a gold. Uh, creator so you want to be getting ahead on this here you want to be items getting items that are will help you win team fights help you get gangs off so things such as drums flads things that are cheap and you can actually build into eventually maybe like a deso deso is pretty good now but i like drums and vlad on this hero pretty much the standard competitive build um michael kind of misplayed that a little bit by running in and then running back really good drop by visage really Pretty good control. He could have gotten the second one though. Um, he stopped to resummon. He should have just kept running, but playing massage and eating the birds can be 
a little bit confusing. Even if, even if you're like good at the game and you only and you just like have your first visage game, it does get a little bit confusing. But still, no. Let's take a look. So we got a traveling is a pact. Let's take a look at uh, their vision. What are, what's where's their vision at? Okay, so whoever awarded for them. I assume it's Disruptor, maybe it's Innate. Actually, I'll assume that Innate dropped these wards because I don't, the Disruptor's play has been questionable. These are some really good wards if you're... Oh, what the hell was this? I... Oh, man. Anyways, let's just talk about where, um... Or the Bane dropped this ward. Um, he kind of ran in there anyways, but you can you can just drop the ward right here and put it on the high ground if you know that they're going to be warding here. This isn't even a good sentry spot anyways, because if you want to be dewarding this hill, you can put it down a little bit further, and then you get this extra vision on top of being able to deward on this entire hill. See, so he has a little bit of extra vision that he can work with. Um, he could have dropped it lower. So a lot of things wrong. And they place the ward in vision, so they know that it's here. They have a flying courier. They could have sent that out to deward it. Not a very good deward in the first place, both in terms of its positioning and the way Bane went about doing it. Oh my God, this build. Okay, he has just a naked bat of fury and a boot. <sighs> All right. I don't know what else to say, guys. But either way, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about the alchemist. I'll, I'll go. I'll go easy on him. Like I said, so SF is going for a. Shadow Blade. Uh, I'm not too sure about this. Like, I guess it's kind of what they need because they need to be taking these risks. He, like, the only way they're going to be coming back is maybe if he gets a Shadow Blade and gets like a huge Requiem off. Um, going for a Mech. Even even if he goes for a Mech, their five men is really weak because Alchemist isn't even a hero yet. They don't really have good team fighters, so we have a Bane ult going out onto the Drow. Disruptor's going in. Alchemist channels his ult, his stun really, really early, even though. He obviously wouldn't have been in range. Okay, this Disruptor had his... I mean, Rubik had his lift up. Why didn't he lift him there? He went for the Telekinesis... I mean, the Fade Bolt instead? Don't they have, like, similar range? What? Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, okay, maybe the Fade Bolt does have more range. Until you level the telekinesis, telekinesis off a little bit earlier, but he's, it still seemed like he had enough time to get the, the telekinesis off. And even if he didn't, even if he didn't have enough time to get the telekinesis off, it's still the better play. Like the fade ball wasn't going to kill him, so your only the only good play, honestly, is to use your telekinesis or not. Because either way, you're going to be spending your mana uh, efficiently. He kind of just went out, went out, used the fade ball, wasted some mana, but he went back to base it anyways. But yeah. So we have Disruptor scouting shit out. Throws out his uh, track. This is pretty good. You want to be throwing out track whenever you ha whenever you can see it, see it. Now this perseverance, it could be a wand, um, and an Aquila. And uh, yeah, and he would be just much better at fighting. He'd have similar regen, even though this is 125% mana regen from this perseverance. Um. Bounty Hunter's base regen is really low, so Aquila is going to be giving him about the same amount. On top of really good stats, on top of the wand gold that he would have. It's a really bad build by him. Don't do this. Please do not do this. Do not go bad if you're on Bounty Hunter. And unless you're doing like, unless it's like a really, really weird game where the only way that you can win is if you is if you have to split push really hard. Like that's the only time I could see it being viable. So we have this push coming up. So they're going for a siege at this point. Let's see how they handle the siege. So let's go. Let's zoom out a little bit. So they need. They should have. Ideally, they want the burst back playing in front. They want the disruptor playing back a little bit. But disruptor is kind of just. I don't like this disruptor positioning. He should be over here, um, just to make just to make it really hard to engage on him because the enemy team wants to be killing disruptor, just in, just so he can't get his ulti off. But okay, we got the big raccoon like I was talking about. This is what he went for. He went for the risky item build with the shadow blade, and it just paid off right there. Man, a massive halt with some good, uh, some good shadow raises. So even though he kind of got destroyed mid, no, I'm not completely destroyed, but oh, some really solid micro from innate. Um, got to zero running, got off the double, uh, the double stun, but wasn't enough because of the track movement speed. <sighs> wow. 
what, what else can I say about Genesis, guys? I don't know what else to say. I don't know. But some some really solid play by Shadowfane. He knew that the only way that his team was going to be able to get back into the game was taking a risk, going for the, the more riskier item build, instead of going for like a mech where a mech wouldn't have done too much for his team in this situation because, as I said, Alchemist is not a hero, a real hero that can fight until he has a few items up. Um, they have a lot of ways to, ch to cancel Bane ult. Disruptor is good at, at good versus Bane. Drow is good versus Bane. Windrunner is really good versus Bane. Visage is amazing versus Bane with birds because you cannot stop the birds like coming in. Like It takes three or four shots now three shots to destroy now so even if you're even if the enemy team knew that the birds were going to be coming in to stop the bane alt when it's channeling um it's still gonna be like it's still gonna be really hard to stop and most of the times you're not going to be able to and even if you do you you have to spend like th six attacks between your team on the birds so you're gonna be winning the team fight anyways just a really bad game uh for the bane just yeah and he couldn't really do much uh given like the lane that he was given, especially with the Alchemist's skill and item build. So this Alchemist kind of lost his... I'll be honest with you guys, Alchemist is the sole reason that Dire Team is getting completely wrecked with the Bounty Hunter, of course. <sighs> yeah. Bounty Hunter's build is pretty bad. Bounty Hunter actually had a really good start with a good lane. Well, it's not a good. it wasn't a good lane, ideally, for him in ideal circumstances, but Radiant played badly enough in the early game on their safe lane play that it ended up being a pretty good lane for the Bounty Hunter. So we have the Ags Rush on Wind Ranger, pretty much the go-to build these days. You know, it was kind of like the build, it was kind of like a rare build for a while. People would go for this or, or Lightning or like some Shadow Blade first or Blink builds and then you would go Ags second, but people kind of realized that um, Axe first is just a way to go. So, Visage, item build. Pretty solid. Medallion is great on this hero. Almost always you should be getting a medallion, unless you have like complete free farm um, in the safe lane, where like you have like a jungling carry that is all, can go off to like the jungle. And you can get like a like a, like a 13 minute Axe on like a, a support Visage. But even then, uh, the medallion is going to be really helpful. So. You can basically get away with Medallion every game. He's going into his point booster. Really solid. He's not upgrading his boots, which I think is the, it's the way that you want to be going about it. You can, you can upgrade the treads, but the relative advantage that you're going to be getting by rushing the Ags and getting up your triple birds faster yeah, is going to be just a lot better for your team in terms of your ability to actually win the game. So, Drow has his Manta. In terms of this item build, this is pretty this is pretty solid. I'll be honest. When I see a lot of lower of lower rated games, and obviously this isn't like a low like this isn't like a low rated game by any means. Um, people will go things like Yasha into like Daedalus, but the way that you want to be playing this hero is essentially just a support hero where you stack agility so that your your team can benefit from your aura because this is a global this is global. And when he does turn it on, there is an activation for this aura by the way. Um, now that they changed it, so. It, before it used to affect all the units in your in, in like a range, uh, including the visage birds. But now you have to actually activate it for that to happen. So this is just a way to go. Pop your aura. Um, put some and and not only does it help like your teammates in terms of like a supporting role. Like a wind ranger becomes much more of a carry. Visage becomes more of a carry. Destructor starts hitting hard as a truck, even as a support. How much damage? We've got 54 damage. It's actually amazing. The stack agility on this hero, it's the way to go. The only the only games where I would recommend going for like, like a a different build than this where you're going like for things like MKB or Daedalus um are games where you don't have a lot of range heroes on your game, and in that case Drow is just a bad hero anyways, because this is not a very good hero on its own right. Frost Heroes is though so so the ult is pretty bad. I mean the ult synergizes well with the aura, and that's a thing. And silence is pretty good, but as a hero, kind of bad starting movement speed, mediocre stack gains, really, me really awful stack gains. Not really a carry on our own. It's a really a supportive carry where you're gonna be doing a lot of split pushing, farming up, getting up your agility items, and that's how you help your team. That's how you win with Draw Ranger. So I like this build a lot. Huh. 
Huh. Psycho okay, we have a nice wind runner. Really nice wind runner play. Uh, catches out the SF. Before we can use his, use his Shadow Blade, he waited until uh, until SF got up a little bit closer, and then like he uses the Tree of Vision to his advantage. Got in, got a, got a Shackle, and then popped his ulti. And you can just see how much damage that did with uh, with the Draw Aura and the Agonims and the Dead and the Dessa. Okay, so we're going for the high ground push finally. I saw TP in after his buyback, which he just used, but he cancelled it. Smart play by him. He would have died instantly. Oh, as you can see, guys, uh, when heroes are tracked now, if they're like tracked in a range. Okay, but anyways, we have this going on. SF is getting off his ulti. Ah, there's really not too much to say about this fight. Like, I can commentate it, but rating is just so far ahead at this point. But the new track is pretty good for this hero, where you can. Uh, where your uh, your shuriken actually bounces between track targets now. So say you throw shuriken out at, at one target, at one hero that's uh, tracked, and then it'll bounce to the next hero that's tracked. Uh, and it has a really long range as well, the bouncing radius that it checks for. So pretty good now. <sighs> but anyways, guys, moral of the story. If you're against a tri lane and you have a decent lane, like... They had Bane, Alchemist, Rubik. They don't have the most damage, but they have a lot of stun. And 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 against early in the early levels, Bristleback isn't tanky. Massage isn't that tanky. If you just go for a real build, man, you, you could have pushed him out of lane. You're s if Alchemist went for a real build, you could have pushed the try pushed the dual lane that he was against out of the lane. His supports could have stacked more for SF. Maybe even TP down, helped out the off lane. It would have been a much different game. So, awful play by Alchemist. Pretty bad play between Disruptor and uh, Drow as well. <clears throat> if you see your support pulling, push out the lane. Like really, just do it. And if you have a really, if there's a really weak offlaner, just go ahead, man, and just farm these fucking camps. Like you can get huge off these. You had a sentry to place, and you saw that the bounty hunter went for a boots build, so he had no region. He had no stout shield. Disruptor could have been massive at this point, or he could have been b earlier. He could have been bigger in the early game, and this would have been even more of a stomp. So, this, that's going to end it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and like the video. It helps me out a lot. I really appreciate it. This has been a pubcast. If you want me to, if you want to see more, um, let's go ahead and leave, um, uh, leave your comments down below. Uh, I really need to drink water. Anyways, guys, see you later.